What's going on YouTube? Today is a little bit of a special video. It's been about two years since I graduated Co Boot Camp and I wanna talk about kind of my path, kind of my journey, where I've been, where I started, where I'm at, and just tell you, was it worth it? Two years ago, I just, I didn't know anything about code. I was working as a mechanical engineer, hated my job, Word and Excel all day in a huge company, didn't matter. Let's talk about how that's been. First thing I want to talk about is the very first coding job I got right out of Code Bootcamp. Right at the beginning of Code Bootcamp, they told you not to apply to jobs and they wanted to make sure that you had everything ready. But towards the end, I was like, hey, I'm going to start applying to jobs. So I went on Angel's List or angellist.com and I applied to almost every single startup that was in my area. And one of them said that they were interested in me and come on in. So I went in for the interview. They gave me a test, I went home, completed the test, and brought it back. They said, you did a really great job with this test, everything looks good, but you just don't have enough experience. But we really like you and we'll keep you in mind in the future. And so I said, what about if we do it part-time? And they said, hmm, we'll have to think about that. And so this kind of idea revolutionized or added something to their company where they started thinking about, oh, maybe we could hire interns. That would, that would be a good look for this company if we're a new startup and we're hiring interns, which is, you know, new people, new knowledge, and trying to grow, and so they called me back and they said, hey, we really like that idea, and we want to bring you on part-time, maybe 20, 25 hours. I was like, okay, great. And uh, they paid me $18 an hour. And if you turn $18 an hour into a salary that comes out to be about $37,000 a year, or almost $38,000 a year at $18 an hour. I only work 20, to 25 hours a week and a typical full time is 40 hours so take 38 divided by 2 and that's how much I got paid. Keep in mind I was also working at my full time engineer job so I was working 48 hours at my engineering job and 20 to 25 hours at my part time so at my engineer job I was making $68,000 a year plus what I was making at $18 an hour um, at, this, at this new place. And I worked there for a little bit and just wanted to build up my experience. And uh, after that, after, after some time, I quit my engineering job and I, uh, I applied to a bunch of full-time software development positions kind of for looking for junior people. And one of them came back and I did a, did a code test for them and they brought me in for some interviews and then they said, hey, we wanna bring you on. And so I was brought on as a junior software developer doing PHP. At the part-time developer job, I was doing Ruby on Rails, and at Bootcamp, we learned Angular. So if that tells you anything about what language you learn, what, how that matters, it doesn't really matter. They're more interested in the fact that you can solve problems. And while I was working at my very first full-time software job, they paid me $50,000. And I worked that job, and I worked part-time at my Ruby on Rails startup job. So I had two jobs there. And then uh, after that, I really wanted to work remote initially, but that's kind of hard to do as a junior developer, super competitive already, and as a junior, just put yourself that much more at a disadvantage. So I just kind of bit the bullet and went into an office and built up experience for a while. And then after, I don't know, after a while, I applied to remote jobs and one of the remote jobs came back and they said, hey, we really like this, here's a code test. And so I did the code test and I gave it back and then after that, uh, they said, hey, great. And I was working at home full time and at that job they paid me $65,000. And I quit my part time, well, it was more of a mutual thing. It's a startup, right? So money fluctuates and they were like, we can't really afford you anymore. And I was like, that's okay, I have a different job and I wanna focus on learning React, which is what we did there. And so I worked that job at $65,000 a year for about, I don't know, uh, about a year. And then after that, uh, I have my, have my video about what happened at that job, but basically it's a government contracting agency and then the US election happened and it switched and everyone that our company knew in places that we had contracts were different and they said, hey, we're not doing any more contracts right now. We're putting everything on hold. We wanna review the budget and the company didn't have any work for us to do, so like 12 of us just goodbye. Uh, this current job pays me 75000 a year, so if I kind of uh, graph it out for you, 
This has kind of been my history. Started about 38K. This is excluding the engineer job. So if you don't have a degree and you're doing this, this is excluding the engineer job. So if you were to start at like part-time development and make about 18 bucks, you're gonna make about 38K a year. 18 bucks is pretty normal. I'd say maybe 15 to 25 bucks, somewhere in that range. But let's just say 40K is what you're gonna make. And then uh, maybe after you know, six months experience, you get a different job, about 50K. And then six more months, uh, 65K. And then work another year, 75K. So that's a 50% increase in salary over the course of two years. Yes, I got paid more starting at my engineering job, but I also went to school for four years for it, whereas I went to a boot camp for about three months and it was part-time and it wasn't even meant, there's no job guarantee, none of that. Granted, I maybe I'd be at this same level now at my engineering job, but again, it was such a niche skill that if I had tried and really invested in that job and didn't want to do code boot camp, I could have maybe made more, but if I ever lost that job, I would have a specific skill set and I probably wouldn't be able to take that somewhere else because another company is just going to want to hire someone fresh out of college that's way cheaper than me and is already kind of used to being a sponge. And that doesn't mean like I'll do another 50% increase in two more years. I think it'll start to taper off probably, you know, unless I'm like a CTO making 150, 200, 250, I think the salary will start to taper off probably about 100, 110, 115, maybe 120 like senior lead developer type deal um that doesn't mean like every two years like if i if i got 50 percent of this yeah and two more years i don't think that will happen i think it will the the how much experience you need to get higher will just you know it, it'll be exponentially harder to kind of get more than the median another thing to consider is that you go to school for a duration of three months at a code boot camp or an online code school or something like that. It's a lot shorter than a four-year degree and then you're out in the field and you're working and you're building experience and building your portfolio versus if you go to college then you spend four years there when you could have been working already at a co boot camp and that's kind of a trade-off of, of investments especially the, the amount of time you have to invest in college versus how much money you get paid right out. Yes it's more but you spend four years and a lot more money when if I had gone to development boot camp for three months, that's three years and nine more months that I could have already been working a building experience and I'd be making way more money than someone that had spent four years and just got out of college. Let's talk about some of the questions that I get. One of them being, is code for me? Can I code? Was it hard? And these are all kind of, these, these aren't gonna be like hard answers, but it depends on what you like. Do you like solving problems? That's the thing. With code, everyone, so it, like this is, this is how code works. No one really knows what they're doing. And anyone who claims that is, is lying because you can have an idea of how to do something, but you probably won't know how to do it. And, and if you're okay with feeling dumb indefinitely um, as a career, then code is for you. If you're okay, right, I say dumb, right? But it's actually a challenge. If you're okay with feeling like, I have no idea how to do that, and I've never done that before, but I'll figure it out. If you're that type of person, then code is for you. If you're the type of person that's like, well, I mean, I wasn't really prepared for this and I don't know how to do it, probably give it to someone else that knows more, then code is not for you. Another question as I get was, um, how long did it take you to find a job? So I started applying right at, at, at towards the end of the code bootcamp and uh, I, I, I applied, I don't know, maybe took a month and a half before I, I started before I got the job, but I started getting responses instantly. I got plenty of no's, lots of no's, but uh, I got a couple of yeses and then a couple of you don't have enough experience, JK, and then I got the one part-time job that I had, and it, it didn't take that long. And in between jobs, it's never been a difficult task. It just depends on what you want. It's like if you go to Code Bootcamp because you want to work remotely, chances are it's going to be very difficult for you to find your first job that's remote because you don't have any experience working remote. I, I would think that normally you start out working in an office then partially remote and then full-time remote. Uh, right now I'm partially remote and you know, a couple days a week I can work remote, but it's cool because the office is nice and everyone there is really chill and it it's, depends on the job, I guess. I really like my job and a couple days remote 
when I really know what I need to do and I just have my plans and I just need to sit down and iron it out, then working remote is great. Otherwise, work is only like 10 minutes away from me, so it's not a big deal and I can work my flexible schedule. Like I work from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day, go to the office at 5, work to 1 p.m., skip lunch, and then that's it. That's, that's how I work, I'm a morning person. So as far as the future job prospects, well there's a huge increase in demand for developers and there will be a huge increase in demand for developers and the great thing is that the college degree isn't necessarily needed. It always says preferred, at least for all the job applications I find, it just says preferred. All you need is a good portfolio and people skills. Just don't be weird when you're doing an interview. Like, Don't be the stereotype developer that can't communicate with people. You need to be able to communicate and you need a good portfolio. Here's, my, here's everything I've done, here's everything I know. It would be a pleasure to talk to you. And I, I don't think I don't think in the future job prospects will be very hard. And it, with the skills that you have, you could always make something for yourself. You could always build something, build an app for yourself. But the, the past two years have been a roller coaster, that's for sure. I've worked at, generally I work at more startup vibey jobs, more kind of unpredictable jobs, which as far as unemployment goes, yes, it's up and down, but you get more benefits. It's not a very corporate environment, and I'm glad that I have those options. I will gladly take a more startup environment and a more unsure environment for the flexibility that provides for my like everyday happiness, which is what I need. I need flexibility to feel in control, and that's what kind of startups provide. Like Sometimes it's a little bit scary because they run out of money, like what happened with my part-time job, but you always get another job, especially with your skill set, and you'll always have a portfolio of work behind you showing what you've done. My experience so far has, can, has been kind of uh, like a, a stock chart. If you take Google or Amazon, you know, it's a little bit bumpy, but overall the trend is up. And that's, you know, my choice because I pick startups and because it provides the life that I want. And that's just what I pick. If you guys are considering going to a Kobu camp or you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them. Hopefully this video has shined some insight in kind of my career and my journey so far over the past two years and I hope this information can help you in some way. If you like these videos and want to see more, click on the little bell, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.